So yeah, so March is, um, uh, I believe the uh, the weather gods call it a transition month. And uh, by God, it has been, hasn't it? Uh, there's also that expression, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. But let me tell you, just over a week ago, there were a foot of snow in this neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding you, there were a foot of snow. Everybody were panicking. All the media, certainly the broadcast, broadcast media, were hyping it up. You'd think we're about to uh, be subjected to a nuclear attack or uh, uh, an asteroid impact or something cataclysmic. And uh, everybody got in a right dither on about it. And uh, all right, so there were a foot of snow on, on the hills, particularly uh, in this neck of the woods in Yorkshire, where you got an amber weather warning. What a load of bollocks, honestly. If you live here locally, or if you don't, provided you've done some basic research and checked the weather, <laughs> there's no excuse whatsoever for getting stuck on the tops of the M62, particularly around nearly top round that area. Junction 22, 23, 24, all of that. Where everybody had to spend the night unless there are exceptional circumstances oh did you see that bloody RS Turbo Mark 1 Escort RS Turbo wonder if that's one of the Derek Matthewson's uh, anyway where were I? yeah so not you know complete dither on uh, media up in the ante getting everybody wound up and folk getting stuck on M62 um, when snow co snow's been forecast there's no nature it's going to happen up there. Lordy lordy. Anyway, in a couple of days it were gone and that were always going to be the case. Not like days at Icon, it's not that long ago, I'm not that bloody old you know, but uh, it's within my adult memory that, uh, you know, you get a massive dump of snow around these parts and it'd still be there a month later. You want a prairie you're getting your bike out. So, uh, yeah, a load of old uh, panic about nothing, ably assisted by the likes of the BBC. Doom mongering. Right, so here we are. Now, as you might see upon my uh, hands here, I have these here. Foggy garage, Ethiopian black iron gloves, that I've done a, an unboxing review of, and this is an on the bike review the first on the bike review now like I said it's a lovely sunny day but uh, out of the Sun it's about 10 degrees so I've got the heated grips on here and with the heated grips on these are absolutely fine um, and with these hand guards on deflecting uh, the airflow I feel perfectly comfortable in these gloves and I think they look absolutely cracking. You know, these could almost qualify as an offensive weapon, couldn't they? But <laughs> if you look at it like knuckle, built in knuckle dusters. Uh, but no, obviously it's uh, it's uh, armour, it's protection. I mean, I am assured by Foggy Garage that these gloves are CE approved. Right, okay. That's what I'm saying. I've asked them are they CE approved? There's people ask the question. There were people saying, uh, oh, Chinese rubbish, I bet they're not CE approved. You shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be promoting them. Uh, they could be dangerous, some, you know, except blah, 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 blah. Right, so I've asked the question, and not only have they said um, that they are CE approved, but they sent me a copy of the certificate. which looks to my eyes to be genuine so I can say no more than that the bottom line is this if you're gonna buy anything from anywhere online it's your responsibility as the purchaser to make sure you are fully informed about what you're buying so if your primary concern is is such and such an item CE approved or whatever it's your responsibility to satisfy yourself 
either based on what's on the website or based on any response the vendor sends you by way of email or whatever um, to, to be satisfied that you're willing to part with your money on, on that basis shall we say a little bit difficult to put into words but what I'm saying is it's a you know there's this expression in this Latin expre expression caveat emptor which means buyer beware and uh, it's a fair point just you know satisfy yourself the best you can before you actually make a purchase uh, but I think these are uh, I think they're fantastic the, the feel top quality the stitching looks absolute top quality uh, they feel good, they're comfortable and they really look the part, particularly with a leather jacket uh, they're not cheap um, but if you have a look on uh, www.foggygarage.com you'll see they've got a lot of other stuff like bags and trousers and jackets and all the rest of it and they're all in the retro stroke modern classic style that's what they're about so go check them out uh, I'm uh, I'm very happy with them. Right, so that's that. So, uh, oh yeah. Now, uh, thanks for all the uh, very very positive comments on the back of that uh, review of the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. Cracking bike that. Absolutely loved my uh, hour and a half. I think it was out on that hour and a half, two hours out on that. And there'll be other reviews coming because those uh, wonderful people at Apoyaz Motorcycles are uh, basically going to let me take out um, whatever I fancy taking out, basically. So, coming, there'll be a review of... Well, there'll be another review of the Super Meteor 650. More in-depth. There'll be the Hunter 350. The uh, Standard Meteor 350, the Royal Enfield Continental GT, they have the um, stockist now for Benelli, and uh, a number of main Japanese marks as well, if not all of them, thinking about it. So I'm really looking forward to that. The uh, Apple Yards, they've been a Royal Enfield dealership since uh, January, January of this year. And as you may well know, uh, Royal Enfield are doing their own importing now. Uh, but I did inquire as to whether that, that, that meant MotoGB stockists, or former stockists of uh, Royal Enfield, or well, no, stockists of Royal Enfield, whether MotoGB would be... Uh, you know, stopping uh, selling Royal Enfields anymore, and I, I was assured, no, no, no. They're all continuing to stock Royal Enfields. All the Moto GB dealerships uh, are continuing to stock Royal Enfields. It's just that they're not importing them. At Royal Enfield, they're importing them. But I have to say that my experience of Moto GB, having having bought three bikes from them fairly recently has been very very positive indeed so let's see how we get on but that is a fantastic uh, new showroom uh, they've got at Apple Yards and if you're in this neck of woods it's in Keithley in West Yorkshire uh, go have a look because I'm not kidding you um, they have got every colourway of every Royal Enfield every one so there's none of this well I want a chrome one who you know, you might have to wait a few months for a chrome one, or you might this, or you might that, or, you know, th there's none of that. They're all there in stock at the moment. Get yourself over. Plenty of demo bikes as well. Get yourself over. And I heartily recommend, if you have, or are harbouring the slightest inclination to uh, acquire a Super Meteor 650, go have a rider one. That's as much as I'll say, go have a ride, because I think, I think you'll be well impressed. And now, uh, <laughs> I'm actually on my way to Squires again, but this will be the first visit to Squires in a long time. And I'll tell you what, with weather being like this, it'll be absolutely heaving. 
first real opportunity people have had uh, to get out in half decent weather in uh, in many many weeks um, Oh, I just meant to mention now um, coming up on the channel uh, there's going to be I'm going to um, do a video on the uh, the servicing of the Royal Enfield Classic 350 uh, which includes the uh, tappets adjustment and oil and filter change and what have you I'll be doing that with a service kit from Hitchcock's Motorcycles thank you Hitchcock's uh, so hopefully you'll be able to see me make a complete uh, cow's ass of that job and uh, learn from my incompetence, that's the whole point I suffer the pain so that it can uh, ease your efforts <laughs> don't seem that way sometimes but there you go save me a bob or two uh, so there'll be that uh, and then from Tech Bike Parts I've got the um, I've got the chrome <coughs> Uh, slug indicators to fit so that'll be coming up as well thank you tech the stuff I've already fitted or well, most recently fitted was the uh, bash plate from Hitchcock's which you can't see obviously um, and also from Hitchcock's which you probably also can't see the uh, polished stainless steel mug guards, which I think look an absolute treat. And uh, I've even managed to uh, to flog <laughs> the original black plastic ones to uh, to a viewer or subscriber. Uh, yeah, so uh, result all round there. Best accessory on this bike is that little clock there. That's from Hitchcock's too. Do miss a clock on a bike. Anyway, uh, uh, we're at Boston Spa. Coming through Boston Spa now. Right, and uh, any road up. So, the reason I do those uh, fitting videos, you know, those garage jobs, is just so that uh, uh, people can get an idea of what's involved. Watch me make an absolute cock up of it. Skin me knuckles, shouting and swearing, and Eddie getting in way, licking me little goals, and God knows what else, and the rest of it. <laughs> and that you can learn from my uh, my angst. <laughs> uh, it might make the job a little bit easier for you. Saves me a bob or two and all. There's some things I uh, I won't attempt. Anything too too invasive, I won't attempt. I've not. I'm no bottle. I'm not, I'm a, quite, I'm a bloody coward when it comes to that sort of thing. Anything too ambitious. Uh, so, out like that's going to go to my local indie mechanic. But, uh, I mean, worst job I ever did. I had a Yamaha XJR 1300. If you look far enough back, you'll see some videos on uh, XJR 1300. And uh, I don't know why, but I bought a, a leather seat cover for it in red. It was it a stupid idea. I don't know, I think... I think I made that mistake of going on eBay when I'd had, uh, had a few sherbets, you know what I mean? And, uh, and uh, you know, like a week later this parcel rocks up and you think, bloody hell, where did it, when did they order that? Where did that come from? You know, Yamaha seat cover. So I thought, oh, bloody hell, but I'll put it on then. So I put this here seat cover on and uh, stapled it down, one thing or another. Bloody hell, by the time I'd finished it, I had more wrinkles on it than Alan Sugar's cum face. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, we're right, mess. Honestly, talk about ruined bike. I, I think it cost me over 100 quid as well. So yeah, it's a time for like that, you, you come to realise that there are some fundamental truths and, and one is that things like up upholstery, they're for skilled people, uh, not bellends like me. <laughs> so that, hey, lesson well learned there, that's one thing I'm not going to do. Let's put it this way, I, I know I'm not famous enough, but I don't want to end up with Dirty Garage Guy slagging me off like he does Del Boy. <laughs> Have you seen them? Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. I have to feel for old, old Del Boy. And sometimes I think, what they call him, Matt, Dirty Garage Guy, Matt. Fellow Yorkshireman. And I think, oh, you've been a bit cruel there, Matt, you've been a bit cruel. But by the same token, 
he obviously knows what he's talking about. He's obviously well qualified and experienced in engineering and stuff like that, I assume, because uh, he talks a lot of uh, common sense. <laughs> Some of it's a bit cruel, uh, it's not in my nature there. So I'm not entirely sure, in the unlikely event of a uh, dirty garage guy looking at one of my uh, bloody incompetent garage videos and uh, calling me alt names under something and picking me apart, I think actually I'd be flattered. That's what it is, yeah, I'd be flattered. <laughs> Crack on! Oh lordy, there's some laughs to be had on YouTube, isn't there?
just had a pot of steam there at a very busy Squires, a predictably uh, busy Squires, as you can imagine, and uh, had the good and serendipitous fortune to uh, see uh, a, sub a subscriber and a long-time good friend of mine, Mr. Andrew Dyson, as you know on YouTube. Great to see you, my friend. <coughs> Great to catch up and uh, have a laugh over some old copper in tails. <laughs> Love days like that where you just, you know, totally unexpectedly rock up at some joint and, uh, you know, meet somebody that you can have a really, really uh, productive conversation with. And uh, something that, uh, that he did mention is um, and certainly on the back of that Super Meteor video is there's a lot more adverts cropping up so uh, so folks if if any particular uh, positioning or type of advert you feel is a, is a, a detriment to the channel a major distraction uh, let me know in the comments uh, because I can sort of tweak what appears where and uh, I'd rather I'd rather that the viewing experience was more enjoyable for people than uh, earn an extra few quid uh, through, uh, through advertising so there'll have to be some advertising because uh, I've got to pay for stuff like cameras and memory cards and uh, software updates and things of that nature obviously um, but but I can uh, I can tweak it so that it's not overly intrusive because I don't get to see them. So when I view my own videos to sort of check how they've how they've uploaded uh, to YouTube, I don't get to see my own adverts. So let me know. So that was uh, yeah, that was an enjoyable catch up with an old friend sure he won't mind me mentioning he's got a brand spanking new BMW R1250RT and his first ride out on it today down from the uh, the east coast Flamborough area via um, seaways at Friedythorpe and, uh, and then Esquires which is obviously where I've touched base with him and uh, I did have a K1600 GTLE, top at range K1600, but uh, drew the same conclusions that I did with mine. <laughs> it's a big, heavy old beast. Right. So, yeah, the accessories on this interceptor, the um, tech bike parts, foot pegs, brake lever, stroke gear lever, so far so good looking good feeling good working perfectly nothing feels out of place a couple of people had asked if there were any undue vibrations to be felt through the foot, pe foot pegs uh, no so far uh, I've not noticed that at all uh, so that's how we are with that particular upgrade and I think that's enough old twaddle from me for the moment so just a, a general ramble obviously coming up there'll be more reviews of new bikes uh, courtesy of Apple Yards in Keithley and uh, there'll be more uh, fitting of accessories videos and there will be more scenic rides through the Yorkshire Dales <coughs> and I hope to uh, be able to uh, cover uh, some of the, the best routes on offer here for motorcycling so all that said thanks for tuning in again if you've got this far 
Thanks for your endurance. And until the next time, keep it shiny side up. And I'll catch you on the next one. Toodle pip!